Have you just robbed a bank? Did you get one of those texts that said you won 500,000 pounds? Are you a drug dealer? Yeah. Sell your boat? Well, we've got the bike for you. This one behind us, it's worth an absolute bucket load, but it's lucky it has a bucket load of performance to back it up. And this is the bike that you chose, Mick, to race at the Cape to Cape four day stage race. I like to say that this bike was sufficient for the task. <laughs> it was sufficient, it did the job. You talked a lot about the climbing performance of this bike, and I remember in Cape to Cape there was a lot of very steep, loose, sandy climbs early on in the race. It surprised me to the fact that you would look up ahead of the trail and you just assume that you wouldn't be able to get up it. And I was climbing up sandy, steep and loose climbs better than I've ever climbed anything in my life. And, um, and then it's attributed to the geometry of the bike. There's a lot of room in the cockpit. There's an awful lot of traction. Uh, and the suspension is still active when you're pedaling really hard up a climb. And I never felt like I needed to have it locked out to gain more efficiency. I actually rode the bike with the pro pedal open a lot of the time. The Scalpel was Cannondale's premium elite cross-country race bike, using a lot of their finest technologies in a dual suspension frame. So Cannondale have been producing the Scalpel for um, quite a number of years now, but it's only recently that they, they bought out the 29er version of the Scalpel, which instead of using a flex day arrangement, actually uses a pivot, so it's got a little bit more going on in terms of the frame set. Still, it's not a, uh, not a heavy bike by any stretch of the imagination. What did it weigh in it? Out of the box, we weighed this one at 9.6 kilos, which is lighter than your average carbon hardtail. Yes, a lot of carbon, a lot of very high-end parts as well. That's why this bike is 11 grand, but you can look at it and uh, see where every dollar is, actually. All 11,000 of them. Mm. The spec that comes on this bike, though, in terms of the componentry, is pretty monumental. We like, we like to refer to this bike as upgrade proof. There's uh, very high components uh, from Shimano and also um, from SRAM as well present. Um, and there's some, some pretty trick brakes. I mean, there's not really many areas uh, where you, you can pick fault with this bike. The Envy gear that comes on this bike definitely deserves um, a mention. It's got the big Envy bar up front, which is a cross country bar, but it's still 700 mils wide. And the Envy rims are obviously fantastic too. A lot of people talk about these things being just the best upgrade you can make to your bike. Um, they're super expensive. You're talking about a $1,100 or $1,200 rim, not wheel, rim alone. Mm. Um, so it's probably $4,000 worth of wheels on that bike by the time you're all said and done. Uh, a lot of people look at a lefty and they think it's it's not going to work and that it must twist all over the place and there's no way that it could track as true as a traditional dual leg telescoping fork but of course that's not the case because it runs on a square shaft rather than a round tube uh, and those needle bearings uh, lock it all in place so there's absolutely no torsional flex whatsoever. Um, it's incredibly stiff and it's the lightest 100mm travel fork on the market full stop. With Cannondales, whether it's a road bike or a mountain bike, they really like to integrate as many parts of the bike into the frame as possible. You'll see the badge SI all over the bike. System integration. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the fork, the stem, the cranks are all integrated into the frame more so than you find on many bikes. It's all about trying to make a lighter and stiffer bike overall. Now the frame of this bike obviously looks a million bucks or 11,000 um, bucks. It's pretty special looking bike in terms of the lines and just the finish on it uh, and I understand that that raw carbon finish isn't just an aesthetic thing, it's actually um, a weight saving device. Yeah, Cannondale opted to not paint the frame rather than use, use plain decals um, and stickers so if you look closely at the bike there is no paint, just a clear coat um, to make it even lighter which is, which is crazy. Uh, someone looking for I guess the ultimate in cross country racing performance. Um, there is there is few lighter and few higher spec bikes on the market. Option. That's why they call it the ultimate. Mm, well named Cannondale. Ultimate. Well named guys. There's nothing better. <laughs>